Hi, this is Donamis333. Today I want to talk about the married covenant as it relates to the rapture. The number one reason why the numbers going up in the rapture will be few will be because of the marriage covenant. Now I've already written out what I uh, intend to say. I'll highlight a few points as I go along. Here we go. When we believe with all our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we receive the Spirit of eternal life. The Spirit of God manifests through us in two ways. There's only just two ways, guys, for the Holy Spirit to manifest in us when we become true believers. By speaking the truth of God with our own lips, and by doing acts of loving kindness towards others. Good deeds proceed from our heart, and the spoken word proceeds from our thoughts. If we are only speaking truth, and are not doing good deeds at the same time, we are not saved. This is why the Lord said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Those who are truly saved are those who are saying and doing. Saying alone does not save us. We must do the will of the Father at the same time. This is absolutely crucial. My brothers and sisters, we have to speak and do. We can't just speak the truth. We can't just confess Jesus as Lord and not do. Anyone that does that is not saved. Why does the will of the Father save us? Or why does doing the will of the Father save us? Is because the Lord dwells in his own commandments. So when we are obeying him, the Lord is dwelling in us by his Holy Spirit. You see, this is why um, it's important to understand this, that when the Lord speaks his commandments, he is in his own commandments. So when we are obeying him, we're receiving him. And then it's like the way a, a, a wife receives a, a husband seed. She conceived that seed and gives birth to a child. Well, the same way we receive the truth. The truth is the seed. And we give birth to righteousness. We give birth to obeying those commandments. You see, this is why the Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You see, it's basically saying, if you love me, receive me. If you love me, become one with me by keeping my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth. You see? So the spirit of truth and the keeping of the commandments are one. They can't be separated. Those who receive the spirit of truth Keep the commandments. Those who are keeping the commandments is because they're receiving the spirit of truth. We practice the truth of God in order to receive the spirit of God. Now by this we know that we know him. You see that word there, knowing him. The same way um, in the beginning, you say Adam knew Eve. Hmm? Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoever keeps his word truly the love of god is perfected in him see keeping the word is loving to do his will this is absolutely crucial guys no one can say that jesus is lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, after obeying him, after obeying those commandments, then a person can confess that Jesus is Lord by the Holy Spirit. Until then, a person who is not keeping the commandments and you're confessing uh, Jesus is Lord is just empty words. There's not, the Spirit of God is not in that confession. Only those who are obeying the Lord's commandments can confess by the Spirit of God that Jesus is Lord. Now, what are, what's all this got to do with the marriage covenant? Like I said here, what is the truth of the marriage covenant? 
Now, this is First Corinthians 7, 10, 11. And this is where we enter. This is where we start talking about um, the, the married covenant in this verse. Now to the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. In other words, this is the commandment by Jesus Christ. Even though it's said by Paul here, a wife is not to depart from her husband, but even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried. Now, what are the reasons why a, a, a woman would depart from her husband? Um, abuse, physical violence. But why does she have to remain unmarried? Why can't she go off to marry somebody else? It's because the marriage covenant is for life. She can't go off to marry somebody else. And yet, in today's uh, uh, world, many Christians think that they can. That they're, they're free to marry somebody else because the man is abusive. But according to Paul, she can't do that. She has to remain unmarried. Why? Because the covenant of marriage is for life. So she, she either remains unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And the husband is not to divorce his wife. This is a commandment. Husbands are not allowed to divorce their wives. If you divorce your wife as a man, you are rejecting the spirit of God. Now, like I, I wrote here, a woman is not expected to say to stay in an abusive marriage. If she leaves, however, she must remain unmarried. Why do you think this is? This is is because her married covenant to her abusive husband still stands. Only the death of a spouse can dissolve the married covenant. The married covenant is for life. Under what conditions would she be reconciled to her husband? This would only happen if her husband repents from his sins and is filled with the love of God for his wife. A man who truly loves God doesn't abuse his wife. A man who beats up his wife is not saved to begin with. It's as simple as this. Hmm? The Spirit of God is present and moves us to keep the commandment. It moves us to do acts of loving kindness. Who is the first recipient of the acts of loving kindness? You know, is the wife, then the children, then the brethren, then people around, parents, everyone around. It, it goes off from there. The person closest to us is the first person that should see the Spirit of God in operation in our lives. If she can't see it, if the wife can't see it, a person is not saved. The man is not saved. I don't care whether he has a church, has a ministry, has a YouTube channel. If he's beating his wife, if he's uh, speaking abusive language to his wife, he's not saved. He's, in, he's imbibed the false faith only gospel that basically you can just live as you please. And so far you keep on confessing Jesus as Lord, you're saved. No, you're not. You have to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father is to walk in love. And the person who sees that love firsthand is the wife. I'm speaking to men now. A husband is not to divorce his wife because the marriage covenant is until death. When a man obeys this commandment, it indicates that the Spirit of God is dwelling in him. He is doing the will of the Father in heaven and will enter the kingdom of God when the Lord comes for his bride in the rapture. Men who divorce their wives are not obeying the gospel. They are actively rejecting the Spirit of God and will be left behind. 2 Thessalonians 1 7 8. The Lord just is revealed from heaven with his mighty angel. This is the rapture in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not, do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? We confess him as our Lord. And we obey his commandments. That is what, that's what it means to obey the gospel. Mm, that's what it means to obey the gospel. The two uh, 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 reasons why m uh, many, many people who claim to be Christians will be left behind will be uh, fornication and adultery. Here it talks about fornication in 1 Corinthians 6, 13, uh, 13 to 15. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Notice how he talks about fornication and being raised up in the same breath. Why is that the case? Because the body is meant for marriage and through marriage is meant for, uh, for the rapture, is meant for the resurrection. 
resurrection of a person has died for the rapture of the person is still alive know you not that your bodies are members of Christ why are they members of Christ see here in Ephesians 5 10 for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones this flesh and bones here is his glorified flesh and bones now the one the ones that he has now the, the Holy Spirit that is flowing into us is coming from his glorified flesh and bones see the, so the Holy Spirit that is proceeding from Jesus moves us prompts us towards marriage that's why it says for your members of his flesh and bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh you see so what does this tell us the Lord ultimately wants to have a bride that are an image of himself but what is he doing in, in, in between now and that time when we receive our glorified bodies is moving us towards the marriage covenant is moving uh, single people away from fornication and is moving those who are married to remain in their marriages to remain in their covenant marriages why is he doing that because he wants to have uh, uh, men and women who will have the same type of flesh and bones that he has you see so he's moving us towards married covenant and he wants us to remain in that married covenant because by remaining in the married covenant we are receiving the spirit of truth we are receiving the spirit of truth you see so we, we read again we read again flee fornication every sin that a man doeth is without the body but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body what know you know that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and you are not your own for you are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's how do we glorify god in our body is through the marriage covenant how do we glorify god in our spirit is through the marriage covenant you see look at what the lord said here in mark 7 21 20 verse 21 23 um from, from within out of the heart of men proceed adulteries fornications murders now i kind of uh, abridge this verse you can go read the, the entire text notice adulteries are not fornications and fornications are not adulteries in the weaker versions they kind of mix this all up and say sexual immorality but it's very clear look at what the lord called these things these evil things come from within and defile a man is calling adulteries evil things is calling fornications evil things you see and yet these evil things is very prevalent in the christian world today you'll notice that the lord called adultery an evil thing whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her he's done it this such a man has done an evil thing and if a woman divorces her husband and marries another she commits adultery this type of woman has done an evil thing whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery you have a lot of men within the christian world they see a woman who maybe she she's left her abused uh, abusive husband and and then they marry this woman you know they're doing an evil thing because now she cannot reconcile with her husband she cannot pray for his uh salvation she's now married to a man who who is not supposed to marry her and then they go on in ministry together and they may have a youtube channel and they'll say well you know we we love god we're under grace it's a different dispensation such people are deceiving themselves because God doesn't see a marriage he sees violence done to the marriage covenant look what he says here in Malachi 2 16 for the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce for it covers one's garment with violence so when he looks at them spiritually he sees their garments ripped 
to shreds. Our garments are meant to be white and clean and whole. They're meant to look like how we read about here in Revelation 19. His wife has made herself ready. Who is the wife? This is the, the, the body of believers who are in a married covenant. Keeping themselves pure if they're not married. Abstaining from fornication if they're not married. But they are, if they are married, it's a married covenant. It's not a, a second, third, fourth marriages. While the covenant spouse is alive, they're not marriages. Such people don't make up the wife. Because why? Their garments are not uh, um, are not white and whole. As we read here. And it was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. Now, how, how does God make us uh, have um, fine linen, uh, bright uh, linen like this? How does, he, how does he make it possible? He moves us toward the married covenant. To be in the married covenant and to remain in that married covenant to the end of our days. That's why we read here. And it was granted, it was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. To be treacherous means to betray the trust of another. To be unreliable. Such a man has been treacherous. If a man leaves his wife, he has dealt treacherously. Mm? He's betrayed the trust of the woman he married. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Do you know what he's saying here when he says, I never knew you? In other words, we, we didn't consummate our relationship. This word knew is like Adam and uh, Adam knowing why, uh, his wife Eve. I never knew you. In other words, you didn't love me enough to receive my truths. You didn't love me enough to receive the spirit of truth. You didn't love me enough to receive my commandments and obey them. I never knew you. We didn't become one. That's what you're saying here. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Millions of Christians who are expecting to be taken up in the rapture are currently practicing the lawlessness of adultery. Unfortunately, they are going to be left behind to become tribulation saints. That is, if they repent. Some of them will be so angry at God for being left behind that they will choose not to, but will instead end up working for the Antichrist to hunt down true believers during the tribulation. At this present time, guys, a lot of people who are in these second, third, fourth marriages, when you speak to them, many of them get so angry. I spoke to one lady. She was so enraged. She called me all kinds of names, you know, cursed me. I said, you know, it's an, it's an indication, you know, that the, the spirit of adultery is enraged about those who speak against it. That's why people get so angry at this. They'll call you all kinds of names, that like you're a Pharisee, that you don't understand the dispensation that we're in, you know, where we you know God doesn't, um, what the law said doesn't apply to them, that they are, they follow Paul. What they don't seem to understand that Paul's letters have been falsified. A false interpretation has been given to what Paul has said. And a lot of people have used the Paul's letters to come up with a different gospel. A gospel that requires them not to repent. A gospel that requires them not to keep the commandments. A gospel that, that um, excuses them to remain in adultery. That allows them to remain in sin. And to continue in sin. And then to continue on in ministry. Why do you think these people here in Matthew 7? Lord, Lord, we have prophesied. Why didn't they know that they were going to be rejected? And that's the thing as this thing stands. They, people are not going to know that they are under God's wrath until they're finally until they're left behind. The scales will fall from the eyes of millions of Christians when they find themselves left behind here. And the main reason will be unlawful marriages. That's going to be the number one reason why millions and millions of Christians are going to be left behind. And the devil knows this. He's, he's banking on people watching this video and rejecting it. 
especially if you've been in, in a second marriage you've been in it for many years and you've got children and then you, you think no 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 i can't i'm not gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna hope that this person is is, is is one of those pharisees you know i'm gonna hope that he's not telling the truth but rapture is about to happen guys I, I'm, I'm gonna make another video regarding the timing um but i just mentioned it quickly here that if we're still here beyond the 2nd of april it, it means that we might be here till the 16th because of the different calendars you know you know there's about two week uh difference between the uh the what's it called the uh, torah calendar and the creator's calendar so it's either by the 2nd of april or by the 16th you see we, we we are leaving i believe we are leaving guys so be be encouraged this is a hard message i know people don't like it uh won't like to hear this message but you know these are the things that must be said because i want people to understand if they're left behind the first place they look at look at their marriage if you're left behind you find yourself you 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 maybe you watch this video and then rapture happens and you're left behind because i know people are not going to really believe it until it's happened all you have to do what is your what's the state of your marriage are you in a covenant marriage or are you in a second marriage with a with a with a spouse a wife or a husband who is alive if you are you, you're going to be left behind but you can say yeah but i can repent <laughs> repentant to repent means end the adulterous marriage that's what repentance means it doesn't mean say sorry and then continue on in adultery against your covenant spouse that doesn't even make sense but that's what a lot of people do they think well you know i can just say for oh, god forgive me and then they continue on in adultery that's not what the blood of Jesus is for, guys. Don't be deceived. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.